Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will give you a complete guide for the summer 2021 rerun event. I feared this one could be pushed back after anniversary, meaning I will need to modify the setups with the new Castoria meta, but fortunately they have kept the lineup of events from the JP version. However, just when I finished recording this video, they dropped the bomb on us with the servant coins coming one year earlier. I will give you some tips on how you can use the new servant coins and append skill, and by that I mean mana loading, when farming free quests in this event, in the last part of this video covering the farming setups. In any case, you should keep in mind that uh, since this feature was uh, scheduled to be released uh, one year from now, some servants require materials that are not yet available. They are giving us opportunities to farm for these materials earlier. For example, they are adding some of them in the event shop from this summer run, but of course they will be pretty limited. Add to this the fact that NP1 4 star servants won't be able to unlock mana loading, even at bond 10, as well as the general lack of lores in order to reach the required 20% MP charge from mana loading, and I feel pretty safe giving you the usual farming setups without a pen skill. Well, for both this reason and the fact that uh, my spare time is very limited at the moment uh, with uh, exams uh, coming close. On that point, as always, if you find this type of guide useful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. As I said, making these videos require a lot of time, which is pretty limited at the moment, so these small gestures on your part will really help me keep going. And of course, if you have a suggestion that you think might be useful or that you want to see in the channel, or maybe complaints, please let me know in the comment section below. Regarding the layout of this guide, I will divide it in three parts. The first one will be a quick event overview, explaining the event Big Chance Quest, Feather Quest, Extra Quest, Mission, Event Currencies, Limited Seas, Bone Servants, The Well for Okusai, The Summoning Campaign, The Spirit and Dresses, The Common Codes, and finally the rewards for the rerun. In the second part of the video I will go into details regarding the general farming strategy, with the steps you'll need to take in order to clear this event optimally, an overview of the free quests including the new level 90 plus nodes, and finally a very detailed guide on how to farm QP efficiently in this event. In the third and final part of this video I will give you the actual farming composition. I will cover both the usual level 90 farming nodes as well as the new level 90 plus farming nodes, so both the VIP and the millionaire. For each node I will cover all quick arts and buster DPS and I will include of course even setups for free to players. I've basically covered all DPS available and rank the different setups in order, so be sure to check the explanation on how to read these setups at the beginning of part 3 of this video. We can now start with the event overview. This event requires to stockpile QP in order to advance in the main quest. You'll get QPs while farming free quest, but also from the special Feather quest and Big Chance quest. I'll explain them in a moment. On top of that, you'll need to clear event mission and some extra quest, along with the usual event shop. If it seems like a lot to keep track of, remember that QP is the primary factor that will limit progress during the event being the main requirement for main quest advancement, aside the multiple time gates of course. Basically how it works is that uh, in order to run all free quests you need to spend a specific amount of QP on top of the usual AP points of course, and if you manage to clear the quest you'll get the QPs back, on top of all the QPs that the enemies will drop. These dropped QPs, which by the way can be boosted by C like Mona Lisa and Bella Lisa, will increase the QP point counter, which you can see on the bottom right part of the screen. You will be using it to understand when you'll need to farm to unlock the next main quest. 
complete those main quests in order to advance in the story and unlock better free quests with better QP drop rates. Just to be sure, remember that the event is heavily time gated with the best free quest unlocking way late during the event, so try to not over farm at the beginning of the event. In other words, try not to exceed the upper limit in the QP point counter. Now let's talk about the two special quests that will help you stockpile QP during the event, the Fever quest and the Big Chance quest. I will cover the Fever quest in details in the second part of this video, so for now let's just say that they are special quests that will drop a lot more QPs and event currencies than the usual free quest. You will get a special favor ticket each day when you log in during the event, and you must use one of them each time you play a favor quest. Each casino will enter favor mode on a set schedule, which you can check on the right side of the screen. For best QP return, remember that Camelot is the best casino, and that the higher the difficulty, the higher the drop rates. So my advice is to save those favor tickets and use them only in the second part of this event, when you will unlock the new Millionaire's Nodes. Moving on to the Big Chance quest, they are all one-time quests that awards a large amount of QP, but also cost a large amount of QP to attempt. They will appear in Casino Camelot when their unlock requirements are satisfied. As you can see on the screen, the final Big Chance quest will require you to bet 50 million QPs, so my advice is to be really careful when you try this quest, be sure to have all your 3 command spells ready in case you need them, and if you want I will put a video in the description below showing how I've done it in the last event. There is really not much to say about extra quest, they will unlock with mission completion and provide some extra story as well as additional sand quartz and materials. Regarding the event missions, among the requirements you'll need to defeat the specific targets, so be ready to jump from one free quest to another. Moreover, remember to put Seberokusai on your team 20 times, level her up to 3rd ascension and reach bond 3. As you can see from the screen, the most important rewards are from these event missions, so my advice is to focus on these ones before clearing the event shop, which should be mostly cleared by the time all missions are completed. This includes gaining 300 million QPs from the event. Moving on, there are 3 event shop currencies to farm with free and favor quest whose drop rates can be boosted by 6 event gacha seas, 3 from the first summoning banner and 3 from the second and third one. None of these 6 gacha seas is particularly useful for farming aside giving drop bonus of course, but anyway I recommend summoning in the first banner just to get your own copy of Welcome Bunny, for the culture I mean. As I said previously multiple times, stockpiling QPs is the main focus of this event, so anticipating what you will see in the second and third part of this video, it's worth maximum breaking your gacha seas if you can. That's because in order to farm QP efficiently, you want to dedicate at least 4 C slot from your party to QP bonus, this including your support slot. If you really want to farm QPs, you can also dedicate all your 6 slot. Between reaching the required QP threshold and completing all missions, clearing the event shop shouldn't be too difficult. So, in order to use the few C slot available for gacha Cs, you should consider maximum breaking them if you can. Of course, all this reasoning assumes that you have all the QP bonus C, Mona Lisa, Bella Lisa and so on, and in minor part that you have played the original event, meaning you should already have a maximum broken copy of the spawn bonus C, Demonic Sun Princess. You can think of it like a slightly worse version of the Jolter C, the Holy Night Supper, so it's worth leveling to 100 if you don't have the previous one. 
In fact, in some setups in part 3, I will assume level 100 in order to reach the required threshold for damage. This C that you will get completing the event missions, it's really important for farming QPs during this event. I will go into details in the second part of the video, so for now you just need to know that it will increase the spawn rate of some special enemies which drops a lot of QPs while farming free quest. And for regular free quest it's comparable to a maximum broken Bella Lisa from support, which is usually the best way to get QPs outside of this event. If you have already played the original event, you should already have a maximum broken copy and you can safely maximum break your second copy. Doing so will in fact allow you to use some of the best farming setups that you will see in part 3 of this video. Regarding the bonus damage C, Midsummer Memories, this one too will be very useful for farming, especially when dealing with the new level 90 plus nodes. It will also be used while farming regular free quest for quick and arts looping setup that use Paracelsius for example. In the case of this C, I recommend to maximum break it immediately for both first timers and rerunners. From the bonus C, let's move on to the bonus servants that will be useful for farming. Just like before, I have highlighted in red the ones that will be featured in the 3 turns farming compositions, for both the usual VIP farming nodes and the new level 90 plus millionaire nodes. Just to be precise, I have included the farming setups for uh, Nitocris Assassin and Shiso Assassin, assuming the 30% insta-death effect on their MP don't land. The event welfare this time around is Seberokusai. To get your first permanent copy you'll need to complete the main quest epilogue, while to get additional copies to reach MP5 you'll need to clear the event missions. Similarly you'll get her ascension materials as rewards from these missions. As I said previously, remember to put the Hokusai in your team 20 times, reaching Bond 3 and level her up to her third ascension. She gets a double XP bonus as always for event welfare servants, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Saber DPS are the most rare among the regular classes, so getting a free MP5 single target Art Saber is already good enough. And on top of that, Okusai Saber is a rare Arts Critical DPS. She is basically a free MP5 Lancelot. And of course, she will benefit with the new meta shift when Castoria arrives. All of this just in case uh, Summer Waifu in swimsuit doesn't motivate you enough. Speaking of Summer Waifus, usually the banner of the Summer events are among the best of the year, and this one is no exception. I could also go as far as to say that this one is among the best summer banners, one on which you might spend some quartz even if Castoria is really close. The first pickup summon has probably the best value. Zerker Musashi is the new Omni Farmer taking the place of Zerker Lancelot, and Carmilla Rider is a very good swapping critical support for challenge quest. She works very similarly to Chiron. But while he gives buffs to the team, she gives debuffs to the enemies. The other key difference is that while Chiron buffs your MP gain, buffing all three card type effectiveness, she will instead give you a delayed 25% MP charge if the debuffed enemy survives that turn. And just for reference, that's the biggest party-wide MP charge on a single skill, at least for another month or so until Castoria arrives. In the second pickup summon, your main target is surely Melt Lancer. At the moment, she's the best Arts Lancer looper, but from a purely gameplay perspective, if you already have Fion, you can skip her. He has slightly worse refund, but his MP charge is way easier to use than Melt. Since, as you will see, while farming the new 90 plus nodes, stealing the party NP charge like Melt does is not ideal for loopers. 
Finally, if you still miss the original Borgen caster, for only a few days during the event you can summon on the Merlin pickup banner. Of course you don't need an explanation on why Merlin is still good to this day, right? Imagine if you live to see the day when Merlin gets a strengthening quest. Aside one of the best summoning campaign, this event also gives us the biggest amount so far of spirit on dresses. You will unlock almost all of them while clearing the main quest of the event, with only melt ice celebratory spirit on dress, requiring 90 completed missions. Among those missions, completing three specific ones will unlock the event limited command codes, with the only noteworthy ones, in my opinion, being major flowers. A flat 10% MP charge is good for any servant, but is particularly useful for those with Gorilla deck of 3 Buster cards. The only caveat is not using it for solo servants, since it has a cooldown of 3 turns, meaning it would be a card without a common code for 2 out of 3 turns. Anyway, we should get the common code update uh, in a month, uh, so you shouldn't really have to worry about uh, using your common code uh, since you'll be able to switch them around. To conclude this first part of the video, let's take a look at what they've added in the rerun. First of all, as usual, if you have already played the original event, you can get a healthy amount of rare prism instead of common codes and spirit run dresses and of course one rare prism for each extra copy of Okusai Saber. So far this is the event from which you can get the most rare prism. Next we have Ruler Ratoria rank up, trying to give her a somewhat decent uh, critical support uh, capability. And finally we have the new Millionaire nodes, these are the ones that you'll want to farm during the event, if of course you can use one of the setups that I've listed in the last part of this video. If that's not the case, don't worry, I have also covered the usual level 90 farming nodes. Let's start part 2 of this video with the general strategy in order to progress in this event. First of all, as usual, complete main quests as soon as they are available. Doing so will unlock better free quests to farm, which will give you better drop rates for both QPs and event currencies. Then farm free quest whenever QPs are needed in order to advance to the following main quest. You can check the required threshold from the QP point counter. There will be 4 big chance quests that will help you stockpile QPs. You should complete them as soon as you're ready, but as I said previously, be very careful about them since you are at risk of losing a lot of QPs if you fail them. In the meantime, continue farming free quests at the end of each time gate to reach the required QP threshold, which are listed for each day on the screen right now. However, don't use Apple yet. Wait at least until day 7, since after that you will unlock the best single currency farming nodes, or at least the level 90 nodes. If instead you can run the setups for the level 90 plus farming nodes listed in the third part of this video, then you can save your apples for those nodes, which we'll unlock later on. Just to be precise, you will need some items from the event shop in order to advance in the main quest, as shown on the screen, but really if you keep farming as usual you shouldn't have any problem getting them. Just be sure to save the currencies you have farmed until then. Starting from day 13, you will be able to complete the epilogue and the 7 post epilogue dual quests. After that, you can focus on farming to reach 300 million QPs, completing the event missions, and clearing the event shop if needed. From here, you are safe to use apples. At the bottom of the screen you can check a table summarizing the order of priority for C's if you want to maximize the QP intake while farming free quests. Things are really a bit more complicated than that, so I highly advise you to check the next session coming up in a minute which will focus on how to maximize the QP farming. First, let's take a quick overview of all free quests. As you can see, there are 6 nodes in total, with 3 of them being the best single currency nodes. 
However, as I said previously, you'll need to jump and farm even the other three quests, at least until you have cleared the required number of enemies in order to complete the event missions. Regarding the materials that you can see in this infographic, which was made for the original event, keep in mind that there might be some changes, since as I said at the beginning of the video, the developers have stated that they want to add the new materials required for append skills through events and future main quests. We'll need to wait when the event starts and we can get even the drop rates, but as an educated guess, I think as usual the new millionaires nodes, the 90 plus nodes, will have drop rates for materials that are basically on par of better than the available free quests. That's if they keep the trend I've seen with the previous level 90 plus node. Speaking of these new millionaires nodes, you can check them on the screen right now. As you can see, the layout of the enemies and their HP are all out of the place, so the farming setups that you will see in the third part of this video will be pretty different from the usual ones. For now, let's just say that the bronze node will focus on single target DPS, the gold node will focus on AoE DPS as usual, Quick tip, level up your SIG, if nothing else as a catalysis to get your Jan waifu from the gacha. And finally the silver node is the worst of them all, requiring a mix of single target DPS and AOE DPS in different rooms. For this one in particular, those of you that have gotten Voyager in the recent Requiem event will be very happy. To conclude the second part of the video, we will now talk about maximizing the QPs that you can get while farming this event. It's important since QP is the primary factor that will limit progress during the event, but also because QP is universally important for your account, being required for every action you take to level up your servant, C and so on, and thank god Together with Servant Coins, they have doubled the amount of QP you can have in your account, just in time for this rerun. For best QP return, remember that the higher the difficulty, the best drop rates for QPs, so of course the new millionaire nodes are the best ones, and among all casinos, Camelot is the best one for QP farming. As I said previously, you'll want to use most of your C slot for C that gives a QP bonus and for the spawn bonus C. That's the reason why I recommended you to maximally break your gacha C's if you can, since you really should have only one or two slots available for them. Speaking about the spawn bonus C that you can get from the event mission rewards, it's very important in this event since each free quest has a chance, 25%, to spawn a bonus enemy that drops a vast amount of QP, based on the level and difficulty of the free quest. The spawn bonus C will boost this spawn rate by 15% with a normal C and by 30% with a maximum broken one. The spawn rate is capped at 100%, so if you have played the original event, you should have two maximum broken copies of Demonic Sun Princess, meaning with just one extra drop while farming free quests, you'll be able to reach a guaranteed spawn rate for the bonus enemies. You could also take a support with a spawn bonus C, but usually you really want to take Bella Lisa from your supports for this event. You should really only consider taking a support with the spawn bonus CE only if this is your first time playing this event and you are farming the regular free quests, not the Fever one. You will see the reason for this in a moment. Before that I need to underline a few things about Fever quests. As I have showed previously in the video, each day a different casino is under the influence of a Fever state. The enemies in the Fever quest are the same, except stronger and slightly reordered, but the final wave will contain a guaranteed set of bonus enemies that drop a lot of QPs. In addition, all normal event currencies drop in higher number and at better rates. 
So, aside from cookie farming, you can also fill the remaining slot with gas seas and you'll get uh, more benefits compared to regular free quests. My advice is to stick to cookie farming and use the feather ticket on Camelot Casino, but I just want to let you know that you can also use them in other free quests if you really need the currencies that they will drop. The bonus enemy linked to the spawn bonus CE, the one that rewards a vast sum of QP, can still spawn during Fever Quest, yet its QP drop is the same as its non favored version. In a moment you will see that these little details will change greatly your best CE choice when switching from regular free quest to Fever Quests. Finally, you should really aim to save your favor tickets until you unlock the best single currency free quests for a particular currency type. The best favor quest nodes match the best free quest nodes. Adding to that, you should wait until you unlock the millionaire farming nodes. Now let's go into details regarding the Camelot VIP node and the Camelot VIP favor node. Technically, the Millionaire node is the best one to farm for QPs, but I need to wait for the start of the event in order to get the correct drop rates for this analysis. Once I do, I will publish the result in my channel, so I advise you to subscribe if you don't want to miss them. First of all, let's understand how to read the graph on the screen. On the horizontal axis you can find the total QP bonus in percentage, just sum the QP bonus from Bella Lisa, Mona Lisa and so on. On the vertical axis you will find instead your total spawn bonus, always in percentage. The points that you should be looking at are the intersection of the grid shown on the screen. The steps I've used for this grid are equal to the smallest bonus your CE can give you. 5% QP bonus horizontally and 15% QP bonus vertically. Finally, the dashed line that you can see in the graph are the ones linking together all the points with the same total average QP drop, using millions as a unit. The different gradation of colors is there to help you understand in which direction the total QP drop is increasing. With all that said, if we look at each individual CE separately, meaning we start from the origin at zero and we move either horizontally for the QP bonus CEs or vertically for the spawn bonus CEs, then the order of priority is the one shown on the screen. First, a maximum broken spawn bone C, then Bella Lisa, then Mona Lisa, then a base spawn bone C, and finally all the 5% cupid bone Cs. However, if it was this easy, why make this graph, right? There are mainly two more things that you should consider. First of all, if you have played the original event, by the end of this event you should have two maximum broken copy of the spawn bonus C. If that's the case, be sure to pick support with Bella Lisa C. Remember that with just one extra C drop while farming you can reach a guaranteed 100% spawn bonus, and given that summer events are unusually long, spanning 3 weeks instead of only 2, it's very probable that you will get at least one drop between this rerun and the original event. The second and slightly more hidden reason for picking a support with Bella Lisa C is because its effect increases the more spawn bonus you have. The same way each spawn bonus C becomes more efficient the bigger your total QP drop bonus is. That's because the QP bonus and the spawn bonus stuck together both addictively and multiplicatively. You will see what I mean shortly if you are interested. I will give you a concrete example. Let's say your total spawn bonus is 45%, meaning you have a maximum broken spawn bonus and a base one. You need to decide between a support with a maximum broken spawn bonus or one with a maximum broken Bella Lisa. In this particular case, Bella Lisa is the best option. In fact, if you start on the vertical axis at 45%, moving up another 30% will only let you cross one dashed line. If instead you move horizontally from there by 15%, you will cross two dashed lines, meaning your total average QP drop is higher. 
This explanation should be enough to help you understand how to read this graph. Moving on to the Camelot VIP Fever Quest. As you can see, the dashed line in the graph are different, both for their inclination and the millions of copies they are associated with. This time around, Bella Lisa is the best possible CE, followed by Mona Lisa, with a maximum broken copy of the spawn bonus CE only being better than a CE with only 5% copy bonus. Finally, these last ones are better than a single base spawn bonus CE. The reason for this difference is that uh, since the QP drops from the normal enemies are higher in Fever Quests, while the QP drop of the bonus enemy is the same as its non favored version, then the importance of the spawn bonus C decreases in Fever Quests. To help you visualize this difference, you can check this graph showing together the level curves from both the Camelot VIP and VIP Fever node. Leaving aside the difference in millions of copies, what you need to look at is the different inclination of the level curves, or if you know what I mean, the different orientation of the gradient. Finally, a little bonus if you stick with me for two extra minutes, you should have noticed from this graph that the level curves are not straight lines. On the screen you can see the complete formula for the average copy drop regarding the normal Camelot VIP node. Below a 3D plot on the left and on the right the previous 2D plot using the same scale this time on both axes in order to add the gradient. Not very much you can get from this, right? But if we try and increase the range for the copy bonus and the spawn bonus, the graphs become like this. This specific surface is called the hyperbolic paraboloid. To be precise, is a rectangular hyperbolic paraboloid rotated by 45 degrees in the XY plane and then translated. If you have done it in your math class, do you remember that when you rotate a rectangular hyperbola, you get an equation with the mixed second order term XY? It's exactly the same deal here for the rectangular hyperbolic paraboloid. You add the translation at the end, then in order to get the level curves, we are fixing a set amount of copy drop. We are fixing the Z value. In other words, we are cutting the surface of the rectangular hyperbolic paraboloid with an horizontal plane at that fixed Z value. If we do that, you can see that the equation on the bottom right of the screen becomes identical to the equation on the bottom left on the screen, meaning the level curves are indeed rectangular hyperbola. If you are interested that both are classified as quadric, the difference is only in the dimension you are working with, the 2D plane for the hyperbolas and the 3D space for the paraboloid. If all this math is confusing, think about the Pringles chips. Hyperbolic paraboloid are often referred to as saddles for their saddle point, with their mathematical names coming from the fact that uh, their vertical cross section are parabolas, while their horizontal cross sections are hyperbolas. This shape has many useful applications in the physical world. As hyperbolic paraboloids are doubly ruled, they are relatively easy to construct using a series of straight structural elements, making them useful as impressive structural elements in architecture. Being both lightweight and efficient, the form was used as a means of minimizing materials and increasing structural performance. And finally, regarding Pringles chips, the hyperbolic paraboloids intersecting double curvature at the saddle point prevent a line of stress from forming which doesn't encourage a crack to naturally propagate. That's why Pringle have that extra crunch in them when you either bite a piece off or when you put a whole Pringle in your mouth. In this third and final part of the video, I can finally give you the actual farming compositions for both the three best VIP nodes and the three best millionaire nodes. As always, I've put here some useful farming tips, which I advise you to check before asking in the comments if you have any questions. In particular, regarding the spawn bonus CE, Demonic Sun Princess, 
there will be looping setups in which a level 100C will make a difference between being able to loop and not being able to. Adding to this, remember that it's a very good pure attack stat C with a nice and rare 50% MP damage buff on top of that. For this reason, and even more so if you don't have a maximum broken copy of the Holy Knight Supper C, you should consider bombing this C to level 100. Now it's extremely important that you understand the layout with which I will present the farming setups. That way you'll be able to find the best possible setup for yourself. First of all, I will present the farming nodes in order of increasing efficiency for QP farming. Meaning, first the VIP farming nodes for bronze, silver, then gold currencies, and finally the millionaire farming nodes in the same order. For each one of these farming nodes, I will start with uh, setups that use uh, Quick DPS, followed by Arts DPS, then Buster DPS, and finally I will give you some free to player setups. For each card type, I will list the setups uh, following their ranking from best to worst. It's a personal ranking of mine in which I take a look at the drop bonus first, then the party cost and finally the damage. I will put the details on the screen as usual if you are interested. However, I have made a significant change for this event. In fact, I have specified for each setup if it's intended for first timers or for rerunners. Basically, for first timers I assume only one personal maximum broken copy of the spawn bonus C, while rerunners should have at least two personal maximum broken copy of the spawn bonus C. You will also see setups with three maximum broken copies, but in that case the third copy is assumed to be taken from supports, meaning no double supports like double scuddy and so on. For very few of them you might see a third base copy of the spawn bonus C, that's because with a total of 6 weeks worth of farming this event and the original one, it's likely that you'll get at least one extra copy. Especially since with the new addition of Servant Coins and the doubled copy limit, most of you will farm this event a lot for QP farming. For the millionaires farming nodes, the list order is always from best to worst, disregarding completely if the setups is available for only rerunners. Instead, and this is really important, for the VIP farming nodes, for each card type, I will first list in decreasing order the setups that are available for all players even for those who are playing this event for the first time. Then I will list, always in decreasing order, the setups that can only be run by rerunners. In other words, if this is your second time playing this event, be sure to watch the section for each card type until the end, because the best farming notes for you are probably there. I have put a yellow mark on the screen each time to help you understand when we are passing from universal setups to rerunner only. One last recommendation, if you are watching this video from your mobile phone, don't use the double tap skip button, since by default it skips 10 seconds, while the setups will stay on the screen for only 5 seconds each. It should be enough time to check if you have the DPS in question and if you can run the setups, that way you can pause the video and check the details written on the screen. Finally, let's check the impact of mana loading append skills. Given that they have dropped the bomb on us 3 days before the event, I don't have enough spare time to modify these setups especially with my exams coming close. But even if that wasn't the case, these video guides usually take more than one week to make, and this one was longer than usual because I decided to cover both the level 90 nodes and the level 90 plus nodes. But anyway, I can give you now a few tips on how you can modify the setups to include append skills. As I said previously, most of you won't be able to make use of them in this event for mainly three reasons. First of all, most of you won't be able to unlock append skills. 
either because you want to level that specific servant past uh, level 100 or because you have only MP1 of a specific uh, four star servant. In that case, even Bond 10 won't let you unlock uh, mana loading. For free to player DPS instead, the problem is only about the timing. You'll need to roll on the gacha for 3 stars, and right now most of us are saving for Castoria, or you'll need to roll a lot, and I mean a lot, in the friend point gacha. And usually you want to do that when there is a double or higher success rate in order to optimize the leveling of your Cs. Secondly, since this was a feature that was scheduled to be released uh, one year from now, some servants uh, need uh, materials that are not yet available in the NA version in order to reach the important level 10 mana loading. And there are a lot of farming servants among them. They are planning to give us extra materials, uh, starting from this uh, event shop and with uh, future main quests, but right now we don't have anything and those few materials will be very limited. Third and final point, uh, even if you exclude those of you that don't have materials and copies ready to level mana loading to level 10, for all of us there is still the problem of how rare the lores are. You can't actually farm lore requiring for reaching level 10 on your skills, if you are not a whale of course, money buys everything. For this reason most of you will use the regular farming setups. For those of you that will be able to unlock them, there are basically three ways I can think of using them while farming for this event. First of all, the most simple way, you can use mana loading to supplement the lack of a specific CE. For example, instead of a maximum broken kaleidoscope, you can use a regular kaleidoscope. Similarly, if you need the, the third maximum broken copy of the spawn bones CE, you can instead use a base one with mana loading to reach similarly 50% MP charge. However, be warned that in both cases, a max limb broken CE will give you 2000 attack stat, and damage aside, those stats may be required for some looping setups, in order to reach the overkill threshold to refund. The second way regards looping setups for the usual level 90 farming nodes. For example, if you have a looping DPS like Dante's, let's say, which don't have his own NP charge, then you won't be able to use a 50% start NP charge when farming nodes with enemies that have low refund, like Assassin and Berserkers. But with mana loading, you can give him a 50% start NP charge, and instead of using Waver to fill his NP charge, you can use level 10 mana loading and Bride. That way you will give him a higher attack buff while buffing his NP gain, allowing him to loop. The third and final way is to use mana loading for the level 90 plus nodes. For those nodes with uh, unusual layout, refund is not uh, as important, since with only one or two enemies per wave, you will need raw NP charge skills. And mana loading is a free NP charge skill that, uh, remember, you must use on turn 1. These are the main ways I can think of right now. For the next event I will start using mana loading regularly. My only question for you guys is uh, how do I rank the farming setups that requires uh, mana loading? My first idea is to treat it uh, exactly like any other skills for 5 star servants that can meet the requirements meaning we have the materials available to reach level 10. On the other hand, 4 star DPS require higher MP levels in order to unlock mana loading. And if you have stick to this channel for a while, you know that I only use MP1 servants by default. Similarly, append skills are great for free to player servants, like Arash, Spartacus, Paracelsius, Avisebron, Gong, free to players can now use another support aside from Waver. But then again, should I assume free to player can unlock mana loading? I want to hear your opinion since this will change how the setups will work in the following videos, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Next time we'll also need to deal with the Castoria meta.
Before leaving you to the farming setups, as always, if you have found this type of video useful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. These videos are becoming very long to make by myself, and my free time is limited, especially now with the exams. So really, if you can at least do that, it will greatly help me keep going. Especially considering that 90% of the viewers of this channel have not yet subscribed. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, may the gacha gods bless your roles for Castoria, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.